everybody! My name is Miranda and welcome to our first Science Live lesson all about the scientific method. The whole purpose of science is to explain and understand the world around us and the scientific method is how we do that. Now you might be thinking, what is the scientific method? Well, the scientific method is the steps that scientists around the world use when they conduct experiments. The scientific method is made up of six super important steps. The first step of the scientific method is all about asking questions. In order to understand something, we have to be curious about it. This can be anything that you are unsure of, or that you're wondering about, or anything like that to be your question. For example, if we wanted to know something like, why doesn't the ocean freeze? That would be our question. After we ask a question, we have to collect research on the topic. So what this means is we find the information that's already available to us from previously conducted research or just things that we know because we've observed situations. So going back to our example on why doesn't the ocean freeze, we would look up different resources online, ask questions to our friends and family, and see what we can come up with about why we think the ocean doesn't freeze. After going through research, we can make a guess to what we think could be the answer to our question. This is called a hypothesis, which is just a fancy way of saying an educated guess of the answer to our question. Since we can't see the future, we have no idea if our guess is right or wrong, and that is totally okay. Going back to our example on ocean water, we could say that the main difference between ocean water and other water is that there's salt in it. Our hypothesis could be something like, if we add salt to water, then our water won't freeze. Now that we have our hypothesis, the next step is designing our experiment. An experiment is a carefully designed way to test the hypothesis and see if our guess was right or wrong. In an experiment, scientists such as ourselves like to make sure only one thing is being changed or tested so that our results are clear and only answering the question that we asked. After we get results, we have to analyze them. And analyze is just a fancy word for reading and understanding the results of our test. By analyzing the results that we get from our experiment, we can find either support for our hypothesis or we can prove that our hypothesis is false. But we never ever ever say our hypothesis is 100% true or false. The reason we do this is because in the future some other scientists may create a different experiment about the same hypothesis that can prove our hypothesis is actually false, even if our experiment supported it. After all of these things, we get to the last step of the scientific method, which is our conclusion. Our conclusion is the final statement that we make and the final step of our scientific method. This means a generalized statement that we make about our hypothesis from our results of our experiment so that we can share it with others. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, but now that we know what the scientific method is, we can use it. It's time to get started with some super fun experiments. Today's experiments are all about acids and bases. The supplies that we will be using are all listed in the description box below in case you want to try this yourselves at home. Just make sure that you have an adult with you. In order to test whether a solution is acidic or basic, we need something called an indicator. An indicator is something that we use to determine whether a substance is acidic, neutral, or basic. The indicator tells us where the substance falls on a pH scale, which is how scientists classify acidity. pH scale looks something like this. Acids will be on the left, neutrals will be in the middle, bases will be on the far right. For today's experiment, I'm going to show you how to make red or purple cabbage indicator. If you do not have red cabbage, feel free to check the description box below for some other natural indicators that you might have around the house. Our first step for making the red cabbage indicator is cutting up our cabbage into smaller pieces. You can use a knife or your hands to do this step. So once we've cut up our cabbage, we can put it into our container, and then I would recommend going outside for this next part because it can get kind of smelly inside. So once you have your cabbage in your bowl, you can pour your boiling water onto the cabbage and then stir it for two minutes and then let it sit. And you just wanna make sure that the water is covering the cabbage. Once it has sat for 20 minutes, you can strain it through a strainer and separate the cabbage from the purple liquid. Then you wanna just let that sit in your second bowl and let it cool completely before you can bottle it. And it can stay in your fridge for a few days or you can put it in the freezer. Just make sure that you don't leave it at room temperature because it can get really smelly. 
Now that we have made our indicator, it's time to conduct the experiment. Following the steps of the scientific method, we are going to test some substances and see whether they're acidic or basic. Now that we've made our hypotheses, it's time to start on our experiment. Since we are using red cabbage indicator, we know that when it's purple, it is neutral. When it's an acid, it turns pink. And when it's in the presence of a base, it turns blue. In each of the cups, I put something different. In one, I put baking soda and water. In another, I put dish soap and water. The third cup had vinegar. Another had just plain water. And the last one had ginger ale, but you can use any type of pop you have at home. Now that we have all of our cups filled, it is time to get started. First, let's test the pop. It's an acid. Next, let's try the vinegar. Vinegar is an acid. How about dish soap? It's a base. Baking soda. It's a base because it's blue. Plain water. Neutral. Now that we've tested them all and we know that water is neutral, we can put water in the center of our pH scale at around 6. Because we used an indicator, we can line them up in the order based on the intensity of the colors. So now that you have your completed pH scale in front of you, you can go back to your hypotheses and see if you were correct and then make your conclusions. The next activity is all about antiacids. The purpose of antiacids is to neutralize the pH of the acid, meaning the antiacids are more basic than acidic. To test how antiacids work, you can put some acids, such as vinegar, pop, or lemon juice, into containers with the indicator already in them. Then, try adding different substances and see if you can get the liquid in the cups from their acidic pink to a neutral purple. When I tried this, I used Tums, milk, coffee, and water. As you can see from my results, the water and milk did not make the color more purple. The coffee made my liquid a deeper red, meaning that it was more acidic. However, the Tums did turn my acid into a purple, it just took a really long time. And there you have it! Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the scientific method and acids and bases with me. Can't wait to see you again soon!